going on guys this is Mike from everydaycarryconcealed.com coming at you another quick video for you guys just wanted to cover something uh, I think there's a misconception about misfires hang fires, squib loads and I wanted to clarify some things about those uh, different malfunctions to, to help make it easier for uh, beginner shooters to, to understand one what they are two why they are dangerous and three how to handle them so first let's talk about misfires so a lot of times when there's a malfunction um, with when it has to do with the cartridge um, and the gun and how they interact you know we use misfire like almost exclusively oh the gun misfired and it's not necessarily true so a misfire is actually when the uh, firing pin hits the primer and nothing happens so either the primer fails completely to ignite um, the powder does not ignite for whatever reason because it's contaminated or whatnot and for that reason nothing happens nothing occurs there is no bang um, now a squib and a hang fire are different because there is ignition and while sometimes it does end up in a discharge it does not always end up being a full discharge and so what I mean by that is so with a hang fire what you'll get is the primer will be struck by the firing pin and there will be a delay from when that happens so when you squeeze the trigger and when the actual discharge of the round is on the other hand a squib load is when the primer is struck by the firing pin, the powder charge is ignited, but there is insufficient force to actually propel the bullet downrange out of the muzzle. And so I can't really engineer a hang fire, or at least I haven't figured out how to engineer a hang fire, but I did engineer a squib load, which I can show you here in a second. But the important thing to note is whether it is a misfire, which could be you know the result of a light primer strike uh, you know a, a improper seating of the primer uh, in the casing there, there's various different reasons that ignition altogether can fail it can be the gun it can be the cartridge it can be a combination of both for hang fires and squibs it's most likely something to do with the cartridge when you have a hang fire there is something that happens in the cartridge itself it's not necessarily the fault of the gun the firing pins either going to strike with enough force or it's not going to strike with enough force when it does whether that primer ignites immediately and causes the powder to burn or not is completely dependent on what's encased in the cartridge similarly squib load it's what's in the cartridge that's going to cause things to be uh, insufficient uh, it's not like you know, uh, the firing pin didn't hit it with enough force, and so therefore enough force was not generated by the burning of the powder. That's not how that works. Like, the primer, sh primer is struck, it ignites the powder, powder burns and generates the force, all right? So what do you do in the event of something like this happening? So you're, you're on the range, bang, 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 right? I'm actually, so for the purposes of demonstration, we're gonna use that way uh, as, as our safe area. So uh, I actually have my pistol here. Empty. Yep. All right. So bang, bang, bang. You're shooting and click. Okay. So what should you do? All right. So because you can't immediately verify whether it was a squib load, a misfire, or potentially a hang fire, you keep the firearm pointed in a safe direction for 30 seconds. Okay. Um, what that allows is, generally speaking, I, I say 30 to 60 to be safe. That is sufficient time for if there is a delay in the burn of the powder that it will, over that 30 seconds, whether it's 10 seconds in or 25 seconds in, that that powder will burn and ultimately discharge the round. So, again, bang, 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 click. Wait your 30 seconds.
bring it back in, then you can diagnose, all right? So, <clears throat> um, again, I, I can't engineer a misfire per se. I mean, I could mess around with my firing pin and file it down, but then, you know, that's, that's not fun for me. Then I got to replace it. So the only thing I could really engineer for you guys is a squib load. And misfires, when there is a failure to ignition altogether, are, I don't want to say not as dangerous because you don't know whether it's a hang fire or not. So you have to treat everything as, as if it's a hang fire. Um, but if it's a true misfire, there's no ignition. It's more of an annoyance than anything. However, with hang fires and squibs, there is a danger. And so the danger with a hang fire, right? So you go out, bang, bang, bang. Oh, okay. Tap, rack, go. Now you've got a, a live round on the ground pointing who knows where, probably not in a safe direction, that is just waiting to burn and discharge. So that's why that is a danger. If you don't keep it pointed down range or in a safe direction, you immediately eject that round. Now all of a sudden you have no control over where that round is pointing at the point that it actually does um, discharge. Now, for squibs. Squibs, why are they dangerous? Well, the powder's already burned, so no harm, no foul, right? Well, no, what ends up happening is during a squib, there's insufficient force to push the bullet out of the barrel. So if it's not out of the barrel or out of the muzzle, it doesn't leave the muzzle and it is not still part of the cartridge, it is stuck somewhere in your bore. So I got a dummy round loaded in here and then I also have my engineered squib load which used to have SQ on it and now it just has like a black mark but, oh, there it is. Squib. All right, I just loaded this up, guys, maybe five minutes ago. So, I'm going to load that up, and I'm going to show you exactly what happens during squib. So, the first thing you'll notice right there is there was a pop. So, the primer was struck and it was doing its job, but it didn't go bang, all right? The other thing that I noticed is that the firearm didn't cycle. It didn't go through its cycle of operations. Slide didn't come back, casing didn't eject. Well, that's strange, okay. So now what I'm going to do, generally you could if you weren't paying attention, if there's a lot of loud bangs or whatever, you may just tap rack go, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you. First, I'm gonna inject. So, there's the dummy round that was underneath that squib load, that engineered squib load. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna pull this back and you're gonna see, oh, there's a casing that ejected, all right? There's our squib. SQ coming through SQ SQ and something happened something burned in there it's all black on the inside right so primer was struck well, that's weird so if you didn't know to investigate whether that was a squib or not you're gonna load up and you're gonna try and chamber another round and this is going to happen if you're lucky Okay, Let me go ahead and eject that. So now I'm gonna show you exactly what happened. Take this apart real quick. All right, so I've taken the barrel out, taken everything apart and, oh, can't see through, can you? Can't see me. And I don't know if you'll be able to see. Oh, yeah, there's a little bit of that copper coating that you can see. Now that's stuck in there. 
you guys don't have to deal with this right now. I'm going to have to hammer it out later. But for demonstration purposes, I wanted to show you what a squib actually does and why it's so dangerous. So when we tried to load up another magazine with our dummy round, you'll notice that it didn't go into battery. That's lucky. That's a, actually a very good thing if you're inexperienced. Instead of it being able to actually fully seat inside the chamber, it's going to be obstructed by that. Um, that bullet that didn't fully discharge. Okay. Now, why do I say that's lucky? If that bullet had gone another inch down the barrel, now all of a sudden, instead of being like this, it's fully chambered. Right? If it's fully chambered, it's in battery, it's ready to go, it's ready to shoot. What happens when that live round has the primer struck and tries to discharge the bullet. Once obstructed, bad things are going to happen. So, it's important that whenever you suspect a squib load, you know, if you have a misfire, if uh, you if you have a misfire, you should treat it like it's a hang fire. If it's not a hang fire, then you should definitely disassemble your firearm or get the, the RSO, the range safety officer, to come over there and help you describe what happened, what you did, he'll be able to diagnose, probably take your, your firearm apart and be like, oh look, bullet's in there. Now, once, once you know what it is, you're going to have to hammer it out. Um, or they're going to have to hammer it out for you is what ends up happening at the range for me. So, always treat every misfire with the respect that you would treat a hang fire. And then also make sure you check for a squib load. Don't assume. I don't know the percentages, but I would say a vast majority of the times when it is a squib load, the next round will not chamber. Not always the case, right? Um, there may be sufficient powder for the, uh, for the firearm to cycle and actually eject. Like in our example, I had no powder in there, I just had a primer, okay? There was not enough force to generate uh, that backward motion of the slide, which would then cause the round or the casing to eject. So most of the time, it's not going to go into battery when you try and load the next round if it's a squib load. However, there is that chance that it will, and that can create a dangerous situation. So always better to be safe than sorry. Take the extra 30 seconds to make sure that it's not a hang fire. Take the extra minute to take apart your firearm and check and visually inspect the barrel. Um, so again, guys, uh, just wanted to clarify the difference between misfire, hang fire, and squib. I can only engineer one of those three um, for you guys for demonstration purposes, but I figured it was important, especially for the beginners, to understand exactly what's going on, what occurs in the firearm, and sort of how to inspect your firearm after the fact to make sure that you uh, that you don't have an obstruction in your barrel. What's going on guys? So uh, aftermath of uh, my little squib load test. So I somehow have to get this blockage out of my bore. And uh, so I got a universal bench block here. I got an old cleaning rod. Um, and Brox cleaning rod that I'm going to use to actually uh, hammer this thing out. So uh, hopefully it comes out relatively easy, but uh, sacrifices must be made in the name of education. And so uh, here I am um, trying to help you guys out and just wanted to show not only did I use one of my precious primers, now I got to spend my time banging this thing out of this stock Glock barrel. So. Um, all right, let's see if we can hammer this out. I apologize if it gets loud. Um, so I, I'm i going, because it is much closer to this end than this end, I will be going uh, back the way uh, from whence it came uh, with this bullet. It's really good. I think some people say, like, oh, you're supposed to, to hammer it out in, in the towards the muzzle end and... I don't know. I've had it hammered out whichever way I can get it out the easiest and uh, barrel seems still uh, to still work. So 
for me, I will be going back out the way that that bullet seated in my and Ooh. there it is, folks. So uh, again, guys, this is just a quick aside. This is, you know, if you experience it, it's it's nothing to be super afraid of. Um, I mean, you do want to uh, not mar the inside of your bore. Uh, if you can help it, because uh, then you have to uh, get a new barrel. But uh, like I said, I've had a handful of these and still works just fine. Um, so anyways, sacrifices that I make for you guys. Anyways, uh, we'll go back to the video now. You know, from a diagnosis perspective, like I said, there's really no way to tell. You know, a hang fire, you may get that pop and no bang. And then 20 seconds later, you'll get a bang. I'm fortunate enough to not have ever experienced a hang fire. I've shot thousands and thousands of rounds. Never had a hang fire. Squibs, especially once I got into reloading, I had a few more than uh, I would like to admit. But I have also had factory squibs. Um, and if you don't know what you're looking for, you, don't, you aren't prepared for that, it's very easy to overlook a very dangerous situation and so again I just wanted to stress to you guys what actually occurs during each of these things um, hopefully you've gotten uh, some good information out of this video like I said uh, 30 seconds downrange safe direction um, before you do anything um, misfire hang fire squib that's how you address it so uh, if you have any questions let me know um, if you want clarification, uh, if you want more demonstration, feel free to leave a comment. Hopefully you guys have found this content useful, uh, and be sure to share with, uh, any of your new firearms owners so that they understand proper protocol when they're out on the lanes, um, or shooting, uh, outside, uh, so that they are safe during their gun handling. So anyways, uh... Thank you guys. Appreciate you uh, clicking through the video. Uh, like, subscribe, whatever. I'm going to try and put out more content. One man shop, guys. Do what I can when I can. Uh, but, yeah, thank you guys very much, and uh, I will catch you all later.